um, reworking a component, it doesn't need actually a lot of energy to get up to up to the temperature. But what actually stops it getting up to temperature is everything else. It's the board, it's the components, it's the connectors, it's anything metal on, on the board. And um, all these things combine to actually extract the heat away from the device. Now, what we do is we use a, a large back heater to actually preheat the board. And all that basically does, it, 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 it negates the heat sink effect of, of the board and all the co other components. It does about 75% of the heating. And basically it protects the board as well from delamination, it protects the component from thermal shock. And um, it also stops the board warping as well, because like a board like this, if you only heat it in one area, what will happen is it will, it will expand here and then warp. So the idea is to heat a large area and that stops warpage. So very important, say for instance, with a motherboard, when you, where, you, where this, this, this board would be ideal for, for warping if you only heat it in a small area. So what we basically do is we, we heat from, the, from underneath and, and that does the macro heating, about 75% as I said. And then we add the top heat, which is the focused IR, which is very precise. And that enables us to precisely follow here, a temperature profile like you would in a reflow oven. So what we're trying to do is trying to duplicate what happens in production. Whenever we do rework, we always look to production to give us the answers on how to do it properly. And if you follow the rules of production, you can't go wrong because they spent hundreds of thousands sorting it out. If you follow that, you'll be, you'll be laughing.